proportions? Well, the first thing, you better know what a proportion is, so I better tell you. When we say the word proportion, all we really mean is the equality of two ratios, or basically the equality of two fractions. So if you have one fraction equal to another, that right there is a proportion. We, we by the way, we deal with proportions all the time. All the time. You ever, uh, you ever had a model car before? Have you, ever had a, have you seen a model car before? You ever seen a blueprint of a building before? Is the blue, blueprint of a building the same size as the whole building? That'd be pretty stupid, right? Because why not build the whole building if the blueprint's the same size? That'd be ridiculous. And why, why have a model of the car that's the same size as a car? But when you look at the, the model car, the door's the same proportion as the, the hood, right? It's not like significantly bigger than the hood because you want the model car to look just like the regular car, don't you? So if you shrink the hood, you also got to shrink the, the door. You shrink the door, you got you to shrink the tires and then shrink the engine by the same proportion. You ever seen that before? So everything's in the same proportion, it's just that it's a lot smaller in every way. Those two things are, are called in proportion to each other because if you create a fraction out of one of them in relation to like a door and a hood surface area wise and a relationship between the, the model car, it's going to be exact the same fraction. It's going to equal each other, just they're going to be a different value <coughs> uh, on the numerator and denominator. So basically when we have the equality of two fra fractions or ratios, we have what's called a proportion. So the equality of two ratios or fractions. Let me give you for instance. You know, I'll include up your rates as well. The equality of two rates, ratios, or fractions. Let's say you went 250 miles in five hours. How far did you go in one hour, probably? Let's pretend you went the, a constant speed the whole entire time. 50. You went 50. So would you agree that 250 miles over five hours is the same thing as 50 miles over one hour? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. That's a proportion. It's just the equality of two fractions. In general, here's how proportions are going to look for you. In general, we simply have one fraction equal to another. So like A over B equals C over D. That's a proportion. Now here is the amazing thing about proportions. This is going to allow us to solve equations pretty easily in just about five minutes. Check this out. Every single time you have a proportion, the cross product, have you ever heard of cross multiplication before? Yes. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Cross multiplication isn't the simplification we've been doing. It doesn't, that doesn't work. But multiplying across an equation, do we have an equation up here? Yeah. Yes. That equal sign says equation. If we multiply across the equation, that's the worst dotted line I've ever seen in my life. How about you? Pretty bad? <laughs> we'll fix that. It's hard to do that way. If you multiply across the equation, those are called cross products or the cross multiplication. Product simply means multiplication. The cross products will and must be equal in proportions. So, in all proportions, the cross products, that means cross multiplication, must be equal. For us in this example, that means that if you have these fractions, there's a very easy way to get rid of the fractions. This is so beautiful. You don't have to deal with, with fractions if you have a proportion. Proportion is just one fraction equal to another one. So if you have that, you simply take the A times D, 
and it must equal b times c. That's got to be true. The cross products must absolutely be equal if you have a true proportion. By the way, this allows you to check to see if a proportion is true. For instance, we can verify that this is a true proportion. If you do the cross product here, you would get 250 times 1. Do you see where those numbers are coming from, folks? Yeah. yeah. 250 times 1 equals, what's it, what's it got to equal? 5 times 50. 5 times 50. See where those numbers are coming from? What's this side give you? 250. What's the other side give you? 250. Are they equal? Yeah. That means that I started with a valid proportion. If they ever come out to be unequal, then you know that that proportion was not a true proportion or not a valid proportion. Would you like to see a couple more examples of that? Sure. So right here, you're simply, you're verifying whether these proportions are accurate or not, basically. So let me give you a couple examples. We're asking is 3 fourths equal to 9 twelfths. Now, there are, I'll grant you, there's a couple ways to do this. You could just simplify this fraction and see if it's the same. But if you have some fractions that are kind of nasty looking or, or you don't really want to simplify any fractions, you could check it with a cross product. So for instance, a cross product would say you multiply these two, you multiply those two, you get 3 times 12 equals 4 times 9, and you check to see if they're the same. Are they the same on both sides of your equation? Yes. Yeah, you get 36, you get 36, you put a little check mark, signifying, yeah, that's a true proportion. We'd say, yeah, true proportion, not a problem, without a doubt. How about this one? Why don't you check this? See if this is a true proportion. Do the cross product and see if they're equal. And do one for me when you're, when you're done with that. Try this one. Is getting 50 miles for every three gallons the same as getting 250 miles for every 12 gallons? You can check that with the cross product. So use the cross product. Again, there, there are several ways you can do this. But use the cross product to figure out whether these things are actually true proportions. Cross multiply, figure out if they're the same on both sides of your equation. If they are, then yes, true proportion. If they're not, then no, it's not a true proportion. Remember, I do want you to start bringing a calculator to class because I'm going to be showing you some things on how to use that appropriately in the future. I don't want to leave you out. <clears throat> All right, let's see how this goes. So first thing we do in every case, if you're trying to check whether a proportion is actually a valid one, which means a true proportion, you're going to cross multiply. Again, there are several ways you can do this. You could reduce both fractions and see if they reduce to the same thing. That'd be fine. Or you can use a cross product. I think that's a little quicker now that you have a calculator. So if we cross multiply, we're checking 3 times 90 and 15 times 18. What's 3 times 90? What's 15 times 18? So is that a true proportion? Yes. A little check mark because they were equal, for sure. How about this one? Is 50 miles for 3 gallons the same as 250 miles for 12 gallons? I don't know, but we can easily check. If we multiply the 50 times 12, we're ignoring the units for now. Is that the same as 3 times 250? Well, I, I don't know. What's 50 times 12? 300. What's 3 times 250? 50. Are those the same? No. 
So you put no. That's not a true proportion. It's, it's, it's a nice and easy way to check those though, right? Instead of having to reduce both fractions, you just do the cross multiplication and check whether they're equal or not. If they are, great. It's a true proportion. If they're not, then no. You don't have the same thing. How many people feel okay checking these proportions? Now this is all fine and good, but honestly where the beauty of this comes in is you're able to solve some equations pretty nicely with this idea. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we can use the fact that we've got portions to solve equations. So I'll put up here, we're going to solve some proportions. For example, Now again, there are different ways you can do these problems. I'll tell you that right, right now, there are different ways. I'm just giving you another tool that you can use. And it's a very handy tool. It's a quick tool because you don't have to deal with fractions. It's a very nice tool. You ready to, to deal with this? So if you have nine, I'm sorry, five ninths equals x over 45, firstly, do you have a proportion? Yes. Yeah. You have, if you ever have one fraction equal to another fraction, it's a proportion, OK? Now, it could be a false proportion like this one, but it's still a, technically that's a proportion. Now, because we have the x, well, we can't tell whether this is true or false because we don't have a number up there right now. But what we can do is use this idea of cross products to solve for what that number needs to be in order to make it a true proportion. That's the idea. You're solving for what that number needs to be in order to make it a true proportion. You guys know the whole cross multiplication thing? Cross product? Can we find the cross product here? What two numbers need to be multiplied together? Five and 45. Okay, so we do five times 45. It does not matter what side that goes on for your equation. It doesn't matter at all. As long as you're multiplying these two and these two. So you could have five times 45 equals, what, what's the other one? Nine times x. Okay, great, nine times x. You could have it here, or look at the board. You could have it reversed. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter at all. Before you do that, can you reduce it? Like this yeah. fraction? Yeah, well, like the, the five. Oh, I see. You mean, I'm so glad you asked that question. Does this simplify like this one would? That's the question, right? That's the question. Yes. Do you remember all those times I had to, and you probably think, well, that's silly. Why are we doing this? All those times I had to do this. Remember all those times I had to do that? I said, you can't simplify unless you can do that, right? And then, sure, you can do that. Absolutely, you get x over 81. Not a problem. Can I do this? No. Does that make it mean the same thing? No. So can I simplify? Can I simplify here? No, I can't, because I can't make that one fraction. Does that answer your question? That was a great question. Thank you for asking that one. Uh, do you see why not, though? If you can't make one fraction out of it, if you don't have multiplication, you can't simplify it. So right here, that, that actually is a lot of people's